Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cyber security as well as career topics. And it's been a while since I've done a career Q&A, so I wanted to touch on a few questions I commonly get in the comment sections. And if there are any questions that you have that I didn't cover in this video, definitely drop it in the comments below and I will get back to you. So I feel like in all these kind of videos, I do want to start off with a brief introduction of myself for anyone who is new to the channel. So hi, my name is Sandra and I have been working in cybersecurity for the last two and a half years. I graduated in 2019 with my bachelor's in information technology and my background is mostly in software development as well as pen testing. All right, so first question, I get this question a lot. Um, are you going back to the office or are you going to be permanently working remote? So for those of you who didn't know, I used to be working in the office full time, five days a week before this whole global pandemic started but since the beginning of 2020 I have been working from home so basically I've been working from home for the last two years and that sounds crazy when I say it out loud um, because I've only been working for like two and a half years so really most of my career has been has been working remotely but as of right now I do think that I will be going back to the office five days a week because my company wants us back in the office but of course if I had the choice I would love to do some kind of hybrid option but yeah that's kind of where I am right now second question how did you get your first cybersecurity job so I think I've touched on this a few times and I can also link a video below on how I got started in cybersecurity but essentially my background was mostly in software development. I went to a career conference where I was able to connect with multiple different companies and one of them just happened to have a cybersecurity role open and I had a certification in computer security and digital forensics from my college and that was really what got my foot in the door and since then I've been working at the same company. It's definitely not super interesting how I got my job story. What does your day-to-day -day look like in your job? Okay so if you guys have been following my channel for more than a month then you know that I do work vlogs and I actually have a not been making work vlogs as much recently in the past month or so because i am transitioning to that return to office eventually kind of state obviously it's been pushed back because of the new variant but otherwise i would have already been back in the office so i have been mentioning in a few of my previous videos that i will be moving away from those day in the life work vlogs because i obviously can't be filming my whole day in the office and i don't know if my coworkers would appreciate uh you know me just walking around filming everyone so yeah i probably won't be doing those work days in my life videos anymore but i might consider doing kind of like a week in my life where i talk you know broadly about things but i wouldn't have it be super in depth but i do have previous videos like that on my channel if you're interested and they will probably give you a really good idea of how every day really is different and it's really a mix of meetings doing your work a bit of coding some pen testing a lot of different things i go into every day travel plans for 2022 Okay, so this is definitely one of the fun questions in here, but essentially I don't think I have very big travel plans. Um, at least for right now I don't. And I want to say big travel plans, I mean like gone for two weeks, going international. If anything, the biggest trip I would have is maybe visiting some national parks because I think being in lockdown for so long, you do realize that you know, there's national parks that you can go to and don't have specific rules to go to. Um, of course, being, you know, safe and socially distant. And another thing is that Luca on the channel, if you guys don't know, um, he is a software engineer and is commonly featured and he actually started a new role. So because of that, when you're starting a new job, he typically won't be taking vacation <laughs> within like the first six to eight months of your job. So I do think that's like a courtesy thing for, you know, the new team and you're really just learning. So you don't want to just drop everything after a month of being in and then go on vacation so yeah that's another reason why we won't be planning any big trips for this year if we do go somewhere long term then maybe we could schedule it in a way where we could work remote um, partially and then take off a few days as well another interesting question if you didn't work in cybersecurity what would you be doing so i've given this a thought a little bit i don't know if i've ever shared it on this channel i probably did but when i first got into technology i really wanted to go into data science that was something i was interested in i did undergrad research with one of the big data informatics professors at my school and that was really where i wanted to go into it was either data science or software engineering um cybersecurity kind of came up out of nowhere and it just happened this way which obviously i don't have any regrets about that but i do think that if i wasn't working in cybersecurity i would probably be doing something more closely related to data science or maybe even just software engineering do you ever work overtime or on call Actually, none of my teams I've worked on, um, whether it's the cybersecurity strategy team, the security engineering team, the pen testing team, or my current team that I'm on for security automation, none of my teams have ever had on-call features. Uh, so I definitely think I'm very lucky, but I do think that a lot of 
on-call teams are usually in like the SOC or the incident response side, the ones that deal with incidents. And I've never been on a team that actually deals hands-on with things and events that happen. So I do know people, a lot of people actually, who are on call for either a week at a time or, or they're on call on the weekends. It really just depends on the structure of your team. And if there is like a team in Europe or Asia that might be covering for you for that follow the sun model, if your company is an international company, but oftentimes on call will be either a whole week or a weekend and you usually kind of go in order with your teammates. But in terms of overtime, um, since I'm a salaried employee, we don't get overtime. Uh, so you kind of just get paid your salary. And, and even if you work more than 40 hours a week, you don't get paid for more than 40 hours a week. So at most, I think I've worked maybe 55 hours a week, maybe 60 if it was really, really busy, but that's really rare. You usually don't work more than my 40, 45 hours. So I do think my team definitely has better work-life balance than some other roles that I've seen or other roles I've heard about from friends. So yeah, honestly, it really depends on the work culture of your company as well as your team. What's some advice for someone getting into cybersecurity as a beginner? Okay, this one's definitely a fun question. Um, I recently made a video on getting into cybersecurity in 2022 and I can link that below. But really the most important thing is keeping up with trends and new tools and new skills because honestly, the things that you learn this year may not be applicable next year and things just move so quickly. You never know when something is going to become obsolete and things just move really fast in this field because obviously if there's a zero day tomorrow that impacted many many companies like the log4j exploit then you have to be quick on your feet patch up those vulnerabilities maybe even consider replacing certain tools that your company has been using that may be older um, less secure than new ones that are on the market yeah it's really just keeping up with trends and also keeping up with cyber news even if it may not be part of your actual day-to-day -day job in cybersecurity, you always want to stay on top of certain things and be aware of what's going on in the threat landscape because as a cybersecurity professional, you're expected to know these things, um, even if they don't necessarily impact you directly. But that also means that you are always having fun because, because you never run out of things to learn or things to do. Yeah, you could impact a lot of different projects just by reading Hacker News and bringing it up to your manager and saying, hey, this is maybe something we should look at or look into. And that could be a brand new side project at work for you. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity in cybersecurity. And as someone who is brand new getting into the field, it's definitely gonna be your strong suit because you're already absorbing so many different things. And it's really that beginner mindset that helps a lot. Do you use any math in your job? This question I actually get pretty frequently, even though I never thought about this before, but yeah, I do not use any math in my job. I rarely even use math ever since I graduated college. Maybe if you're working in data science or physics or something more related to that theoretical side, you may be touching more math or even the probability and statistics side. Um, that's definitely a lot more math focused, but in terms of what I do, there's nothing math about what my role is. I've never done any math in any of my three roles and no one really expects you to you know, be a brain calculator. How much do you make in cybersecurity? This is definitely a very good question that I get a lot as well. And I have a video that I can link below on cybersecurity pay. And you can definitely make a good amount of money in cybersecurity, even fresh out of college, fresh out of a boot camp. You may already be making more money than the median household income in the US. So it's definitely a really viable career path in terms of financial stability. But in that video, I go over a lot more in depth about cybersecurity pay from entry level to mid career to, to adding certifications to master's degrees and everything like that. But based on my memory, I believe that the range was about $60,000 to about a hundred and something thousand dollars per year. But I would definitely check out that video to get the actual numbers and figures for wherever you are in your career. Do you think cybersecurity boot camps are worth it? So as someone who has never been in a boot camp, I honestly can't say 100% yes or no, but I do think that boot camps are helpful in terms of getting your foot in the door and basically just getting started, especially if you're making a career change and you're coming from another field and you want to get into cybersecurity and you already have years of experience, an employer can look at that and see that you have a boot camp and is more likely to give you an interview. But I also think that boot camps are very expensive, so you have to make sure that you know that this is the field that you want to go into before you drop thousands of dollars on a bootcamp. And when you do look for a bootcamp, I would definitely look for one that has some kind of guarantee of getting you a job or some way that they're helping you find jobs after you graduate because you don't wanna go into bootcamp, graduate, and then you're just out on your own and no one's helping you through that job search. Uh, that's obviously not a great place to be, but some boot camps also have ESAs or income shared agreements. And that basically means that the bootcamp will help you find a job and then 
and sometimes you don't pay for the boot camp unless you find one and they'll take a cut of your paycheck so yeah there's a lot of different models to pay for it and i definitely would have gone that route if i were choosing a boot camp just because getting that first job in cybersecurity is so important and that's really the only reason you're doing this so that's why looking for boot camps that partner with companies or have some kind of job search guarantee or job search resource is going to be really helpful and I also have a video on coding and cybersecurity bootcamps and the actual statistics that go into how many people actually get hired out of a bootcamp. And I can link that below if you guys are interested in checking that out. Do you code in cybersecurity? So there's definitely coding roles in cybersecurity. I've been in two out of three of my teams. I've been in coding roles. One of them was a security engineering role where I was working on a few network security applications. And in my current role, I do automation engineering. So it's a lot of Python scripting. So it's definitely not as hardcore as my previous coding role, but it really depends what you're looking for. For example, if you're going into security engineering and source code analysis, malware analysis, maybe even some ethical hacking roles where you're expected to do some scripting, then those are a lot more technical and coding focused but there's also roles that have nothing to do with coding like your general pen testing roles soc analysts incident response ic audit compliance a lot of the blue team roles so so yeah there's definitely a lot of options whether you like to code or not so i wouldn't necessarily say yeah you have to code or you don't have to code in cybersecurity but it really depends on what you're looking for so for me personally i do code but that doesn't mean that everyone in cybersecurity has to know how to code because i do have a lot of coworkers in cybersecurity that haven't coded in a long time and that's just how they like it all right the next question is do you have work-life balance so this is definitely one of the important questions that you want to know in any career that you go into but i think i mentioned in a previous answer that i usually only work about 40 to 45 hours per week so i definitely do have work-life balance um, i don't think my team is one of those that really force you to you know work evenings and work weekends um, so that's definitely something i'm grateful for now of course not every team in cybersecurity is like that cybersecurity is one of those fields where where you might end up taking work home with you so that's the only thing i would say about work-life balance because there may be some hack that you're following at work and you're you're probably going to continue following it throughout the evening um, when you're at home when you're with your family so yeah it really depends on what you consider work-life balance there are some people who are able to leave work at work and there's other people who have a hard time doing that and i do think that cybersecurity is one of those jobs that take up a lot of your mental bandwidth so that's definitely something to know um, if you're someone who really gets absorbed into your work because there's always something going on and if you're checking like hacker news 24 7 um, because you know that's just what you want to do then it also kind of ties back into work and gets you thinking about oh which teams in my organization is this going to impact or does this impact me or and you always have thoughts like that floating around in your head but i think overall at least in my case the work-life balance is pretty good but i will say that because i'm juggling work as well as this youtube channel and a bunch of other personal projects that i have they definitely take up a good amount of my mental capacity and in 2022 i do have a lot more projects that i want to work on in my personal life so it'll definitely be a busy year but i also think that it'll be a good opportunity to grow next question is what do you do for fun so outside of work i do enjoy working on my personal projects like i mentioned earlier and a lot of them actually have to do with productivity and working on different things so i don't know if a lot of people will consider that fun but i definitely think that working on this channel is fun and a few other projects including the merch that i was working on i recently started dabbling in creating digital products for small businesses and that's been interesting um definitely a learning experience i also have career products for this channel that i link below for resume templates cover letter templates uh, career plans and interview prep and I also have three cats that I spend time with as well as going out for hikes um, I really enjoy traveling and trying new restaurants. I actually also enjoy working out nowadays And I also spend a lot of time watching vlogs on YouTube. What is your dream job in cybersecurity? So I definitely have a few dream jobs um, and they change all the time But at one point my biggest dream job was to join the red team and I think it's definitely still a dream job that I might still be interested in pursuing um, but right now i'm kind of open to whatever opportunities kind of come and basically i want to be open-minded to other opportunities that are out there but i definitely think red team is obviously a very sought after dream job in the cybersecurity but i also in the future want to create my own cybersecurity consulting company well when i say company i make it sound like i'm gonna have like a whole bunch of employees but it'll likely just be me <laughs> and it would just be me consulting for other companies whether they be smaller companies or individuals or startups i think that would be a really cool role to be kind of a consultant for cybersecurity and helping different organizations with their security posture so those two are probably my uh top two but again i'm not going to close myself to any opportunities that come that are outside of cybersecurity. Yeah, basically I am flexible. And I'm also someone who really enjoys doing a bunch of different things at a time, which is another reason why I have 
many different dream jobs that I can think of um, that are also not in cybersecurity. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. I know it was a very long one with a lot of rambling. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me that I haven't answered in this video, whether it be around cybersecurity, careers, or anything else in between. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.